Good afternoon, Eastern Washington and fellow Patriots. This is Matt Shea, and welcome to Patriot Radio, broadcasting live from deep inside the heart of the future Liberty State, brought to you once again by On Fire Ministries in the legacy of Dr. Stan Monteith, bringing you the story behind the story and the news behind the news. It's not about right or left. It's about right and wrong, and it's about our hope not being in man, but in Jesus Christ, about not ending in prayer, but moving to action. And it's also about the gospel of the kingdom, Zechariah 2.5, but I declare as the Lord will be a wall of fire to her on all sides, and I will be the glory in her midst. God has put us in the greatest harvest in the history of the world. This coming Friday, the 28th, in Olympia, Washington, Sean Foyt, Kingdom to Capital Tour, and many other ministries. It's not about one guy. It's about the move of God that is happening in America. He is coming, and God is going to shatter the capital And it is going to be an amazing time. We're expecting thousands, probably tens of thousands at this point. So much reaction is happening all over Washington State. We want to see you there. It's going to be at 6 p.m. on the Capitol steps. You're going to want to get there early. In the the comments below this post, we're going to put how to park there in Olympia so you can actually get to the event without getting jammed up on I-5 which is, well, that happens on the west side of the state. For especially you folks coming from Idaho, you're going to want to listen to that and pay attention to where to park. On top of that, we have another event coming on the heels of it. The 11th through the 13th, Chris Overstreet and Compassion to Action are going to be right here in Spokane, Washington. He was here with us last year. We saw dozens of people saved, set free, delivered. And then what was more important, it wasn't just like a one-off, like there's an event and, and go away and yay and... It just kind of fizzles. People were plugged in, discipled, and now they're actually in ministry, some of them. It's incredible, the testimonies. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. What I want to really encourage you, if you have a heart for evangelism, you want to join us on the streets of Spokane. We already have over 60 people ready as teams to go out on the streets of Spokane, Washington, and beyond to evangelize. Bring the gospel even into the darkest places. If that resonates with you, show up on the 11th through the 13th right here at On Fire Ministries, 115 East Pacific. And I know you're going to enjoy the time with Chris Overstreet and Compassion to Action. I would also ask everybody right now, take a moment, stop, comment, like, share. And if you get a chance, go to Rumble and specifically subscribe on Rumble so we're not going to get censored on any of the other Social media platforms. Rumble's been very, very good to us. Subscribe to Rumble and use that as the primary way that you can view and share Patriot Radio in the future. Our daily intelligence briefing today isn't going to be about what the enemy is doing all over the world. Our briefing today is going to be what God is doing. I have heard from so many people, well, it's just going to get worse. I don't see that. I see it actually getting better in many respects. I see where there is apostasy, at the same time there is awakening. And so as the dark gets darker, the light gets lighter. And so the two things aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, what it's doing is bringing all of us to a decision point. How sold out are we to the Lord? Do we really believe he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords? And have we really turned over every aspect of our life to him? And when we do, some pretty amazing things happen. And that's why we have in studio with us today, Chris Overstreet. He's an evangelist. His massive ministry, which is so fantastic what God's doing through him, Compassion to Action, CompassionToAction.com. He's also the author of Capturing Heaven's Attention. It's a book about radical obedience to God and the signs and wonders that follow suit after that. And I think all of you want to be a part of that. Chris, it's great to have you in the studio today. Blessings always amazing when we get a chance to fellowship and time to fellowship, man. It is such an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And I am so fired up for what God is doing here in the Northwest and beyond. It is a decision, a moment in time. And and God is awakening the hearts in America and beyond. Travis, if we could, let's go ahead and roll this video in regards to the banner. We, we, we have all of this division sometimes in the church, and it doesn't need to be there. We should be united under one banner, the banner of Jesus Christ. This is a call. The blood of Jesus is enough for the sins of the nation, 
for the darkness of the nation, for the way that our nations turn its back on God. To every denomination and every believer. And we bring let us worship to every single state capital across America. To gather together by the thousands to pray and worship. Join with us as we journey to see the fires of revival burn in every single U.S. capital. All God's people gathered together under one banner. Again, July 28th, 6 p.m. at the Capitol in Olympia. Chris, we were talking about before the show that... You know, we really need to have a movement of God where it's not just one dude or one dudette. You know what I mean? Where where it's not one person, but it's actually a a move across a broad spectrum. Quite often, people think only the pastor can baptize, only the pastor can pray for people, when really God is calling all of us into a ministry that affects the and transforms the entire world. Absolutely, yeah, and that and that is the role of the fivefold ministry is to be able to equip the saints and uh, God wants to use every individual. And if you are a born again, Christian, I've got good news for you. God wants to use you to openly display his love and his power to touch this generation. So with that, you know, part of it is we have to equip. I mean, that's what it says in the fivefold ministries. We, they exist to equip and build up the body but what does that actually look like? I mean, you you see probably more than I have. You got some hierarchical stuff out there. You got some stuff that really is not very effective out there and lacks the spirit of excellence. What does this look like for America in this time? I think for America, first of all, we need to understand the heart of God. God's heart is that none perish. I believe in equipping that we have to have a kingdom perspective. And we have to have an eternal perspective. And at the very foundation, righteousness and justice has to be written on our heart. I think there's a role of continually preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And what is the kingdom? It's it's God's domain. And when we talk about equipping the saints, we have to understand first and foremost, who are we talking about? We're talking about God. We're talking about the one that created the heavens and the earth, but the one that created you in his image. And God wants to use the everyday person to express his nature on earth as it is in heaven. Let's talk about something you just mentioned, that God has a heart for everyone. That includes Satanists and Antifa and the LGBTQ community and, and beyond. Some of the church doesn't seem to want to reach out to you know those communities, but it seems like that that's where revival really is beginning to take off. Absolutely. And, and the heart of God is that they would know Jesus, too. While they were yet still sinners, while you and I were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. And that's the heart of the Lord is that we would see from a lens of love and compassion, but would preach the truth. And oftentimes what happens is people will buy into this gospel that's, uh, if you will, it's a perverted grace gospel that says that anyone can live any way that they want to, and they're still going to make it with Jesus. But that's not really the gospel. The gospel actually causes a bleeding heart inside of us to be able to say, this is about eternity, and we don't want to see anyone perish, and we want to be able to preach the gospel. We want to see the love of Jesus Christ penetrate their hearts with the gospel of truth so that they come into repentance and their lives are changed and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you, Satanists, if, if, if there's oxygen that they're breathing, listen, there's still time. Uh, the LGBT community, God loves the LGBT community. God hates the sin, but God loves the sinner. And God's heart is for them that they would get born again, set on fire, and to disturb religious spirits. I believe it's time. I believe it's time for the Church of Jesus Christ to become mobile with their faith and leave the church buildings and preach the gospel. And that's where the seven mountains come in. And God wants to use everyone in every realm of society to understand the gospel, preach the gospel, demonstrate the gospel. We're going to get to the seven mountains here in a second. I want to hone in on this 
church beyond the four walls. You do it all the time, but it actually, unfortunately, is a rarity. I mean, in the United States, at least. But when we get out beyond the four walls, we see some pretty incredible things happen, like a Satanist being evangelized and giving their life to Jesus Christ. Go ahead, roll it. So I became suicidal. I wanted to put a gun to my head and be done with my life. So seven and a half years later, I went out and I ripped off a drug dealer. He was in my car. I told him I was a cop. Get out of the car, put your hands on the hood. And when I did, he opened up. A full clip of a 9mm. I heard a voice when the bullets came out. The voice said, I took those bullets for you. Are you ready to live for me? I've done the Ouija boards, the tarot cards. I've done it all. I couldn't find peace. That night, I heard that voice. I got home. I thought I was. I thought I was bleeding. There were no bullets in my car. From three meters. And the voice wouldn't go away. I went away to a rehab, another rehab. And I was there for two months. And I had three nights in a row where I met Jesus. I didn't meet church. I didn't meet religion. I met him. He told me he was the voice. He rocked my life. He changed my everything. He made me a dad. And I came home. And my girlfriend met Jesus when I went away. And we got married four days later. And that was 14 years ago. Man, I'm telling you, he loves you. I promise. Okay? Hey, I love you. I love you so much, bro. Wow. So powerful. Chris, I know you've experienced that several times. Tell the listeners a little bit about those those times where you've you've evangelized people that people thought were totally lost, totally irredeemable, but God met them right there. Absolutely. One of the things that I, I just want to highlight here is you notice how Todd was ministering out of a place of love and compassion, which is huge. And if you don't feel love and compassion for people, you're going to be afraid and you're going to shrink back. And it's the love of God. It's the compassion of Jesus Christ that inspires people to be bold. And um, just like that testimony, I mean, it was the love of God that was oozing out of him, but there was truth connected to it. And I, I remember, you know, numerous times, uh, you know, traveling in Africa and meeting people that were steeped in witchcraft and and just seeing the love of Jesus Christ come out, but the power of the spirit and them breaking forms of witchcraft and and repenting and saying, I don't want to have anything to do with this. It, here's the deal. There are many people that are in witchcraft. They're seeking a power that is a counterfeit power, and they're desiring something to be able to fill that void. And uh, But when the gospel of the kingdom is preached, something happens that forces that person to a decision, mm. and that decision is repentance, and faith in Jesus Christ. But it's manifested and it's presented through the lens of compassion and truth. That compassion and truth, we've seen at many different events where people came with one idea that was protesting or spitting or throwing whatever, and then God meets them right there and they give their lives to Jesus. He had a different idea for them that it was a different appointment than when they first got up that morning, you know? And as Christians, if we take that approach, every single day is an opportunity for evangelism. It's a it's an opportunity, and 
You know, I, I'm so convinced that our gatherings that we have, that in many ways we have really begun to make church what it was never meant to be. And I remember me being at a conference, and while I was at the conference, you know, everyone's hands were up, and the Lord spoke to me. He says, Chris, I want you to leave right now, and I want you to go to this particular street called 273. And he spoke to me, and he says, obey me. This is worship. And so my mindset was that worship is something that we just do in a building, then we'll miss a lot of opportunities. So I, I obeyed the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me that he would commission somebody that night and and to be an evangelist. And so I drove. It was about 15 minutes away, and I drove, and I, I saw someone that was highlighted at this street corner. And um, I pulled over, and I said, excuse me, I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. He's got a plan for your life, and he sent me here for you. And he, and he says, what's your name? I said, my name is Chris Overstreet. And he said, prove it to me. <laughs> I've never had anyone say this to me before. And he said, prove it to me. Let me see your ID. And so I, I give him my ID and I says, it's really me. It's Chris Overstreet. He says, this is crazy. Before you even pray for me, I've got to tell you a story. And he says, I was raised in this town and I was taken out of my home when I was a child because my parents were drug dealers and my foster grandma told me that one day I would meet Chris Overstreet and that Chris Overstreet would help me. This was over 15 years prior. Wow. Ten days before me meeting this young man, he was at a trap house. And he left the trap house, and uh, and he was walking down this bridge, and he said, God, you hate me. Look at my life. If you really love me, then why is all this stuff in my life? happening and he said if you really love me then where is that chris over street that my grandma would talk about tell him exactly where i'm at show him exactly where i am at and send him to me that night god sent me to him he spoke to me inside a worship gathering he said worship is not something that you just do inside of a building but it's with your whole heart and your whole life And um, I laid my hands on him. The power of the Holy Spirit came upon him. He got delivered. He surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And his life has been changed and transformed by the power of the Lord. And that's been over a year. And I wrote about it in just in my recent book that's coming out in October. And it's called Capturing Heaven's Attention. I believe that every believer is called to capture heaven's attention as we are staying sensitive to the Holy Spirit and what he's saying and how we can obey him. Amen. And when you see this kind of thing happen, where you there, there is no other explanation, right? You can try to rationalize. You can try to invent things. You can say, ah, you know, maybe it's just coincidence. But when you see this happen, and you know that you know that you know there was an encounter with the Lord, right? You can stand on that through thick and thin. It doesn't matter what comes at you in your life. You can stand on it through thick and thin. For me, I was over in Bosnia. I'm standing over a mass grave. I see all of that horrible stuff, all the, the skulls, and some of the hands were still bound with wire. Some of the skulls still had blindfolds on them because it didn't decay. And I'm looking at that horrible scene, and that's where God met me. Wow. And he said, there's something that is the opposite of this. And when he said that to me, I wanted to find it. There was the opposite of that evil, and it was good, and I wanted to press into it. It was compassionate. It was loving. It was affirming. It it, it, it changed my life, and I couldn't help but run out and tell as many people as possible about that encounter with Jesus Christ. I think we we miss that just basic, simple thing when we caught, get caught up in all the trappings of marketing and religion and all these things. When it's really that easy, let's just meet Jesus. Yeah. And and when we meet him, we have an encounter with him to become that encounter to people around us. Oh, man. Amen. And we talked a little bit before the show, too, about Africa. I just want to share just briefly on that. I was standing on a platform in Africa. There's, I think it was 50,000 plus people out there in front of me. And I was like, Lord, why do you have me here? He says, because this is going to happen in America. I want you to see it here first. In other words... I wanted you to see this is possible. 
that this is 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 a reality watching this many people giving their lives to Jesus being healed being set free and this is going to happen in America I know you have a heart for Africa as well uh and God has kind of shifted that back to America tell everyone listening and watching right now a little bit about what God's doing in that space yeah so many years ago I um I would be going back and forth to Africa I've been to Africa 30 sometimes and it was around five years ago or so I was in South Africa. And while I was in South Africa, there was a gentleman that spoke to me and said, you've been coming to Africa quite a bit, bringing teams. And he said, I, I feel that you need to stop coming here and you need to focus on America. Now, when he said that to me, Matt, I, I was, I was a little bit disturbed because at one time, I, I was convinced that I was going to be a missionary evangelist in Africa and live there. Yeah. And, um, and that that's something that I was just so passionate about. And when he said that, something shifted inside of me, and I began to pray. And the Lord began to speak to me about America, to begin to focus in on America. And it was shortly after that that we launched our ministry called Compassion to Action with our first mandate to reach America. And I remember in our first gathering that we had in Portland, Portland 2018, that the Lord began to speak to me that what we saw in Portland, that it would spread all over America, that there would be evangelistic campaigns that would literally be all over America. And he showed me it wasn't just like us doing stuff. It was many ministries collaborating together and that there would be stadiums, that there would be open air mm. events, that the, that the spirit of the living God was moving in America in the midst of all darkness that there was a light that was shining that was going to pierce the hearts. And I really believe that that what the Lord showed us in, in 2018, it's upon us right now. There is a disturbance, and it's a godly disturbance where the Lord is awakening the church to be able to say, I want you to be a voice. Mm. I want you to stand for righteousness, and I want you to openly display the love and the power of Jesus Christ. I believe that God is doing something in America, and I believe that we are all a part of it. For anyone that would say, Jesus, use me. God will do it. He will absolutely do it in every single sphere. And let's talk about those spheres right now. You know, it, it was really controversial that somebody used the term seven mountains. I'm like, what? It's just talking about the areas of our lives. So, okay, family, government, business, arts and entertainment, media. And we have a, a little bit. Education. Education. We have a little bit of, of issue on that last one, arts and entertainment. Can that really ever be redeemed for the Lord? I don't know. Yes, it can. And yes, God. May. And then also the last one, the church, which I find always fascinating. We we sometimes think that the church is this little tiny bounded sphere. That's only place that God wants to redeem. It's the only place God wants to operate in. When Jesus Christ says, I'm coming to redeem everything. There, there is nothing out there, not one thing that I don't want. And I want you to talk a little bit about that, this idea that we can be evangelists where God has planted us in business, government, in arts, entertainment, in media. We can be that evangelist right there and blossom right there. Yeah, the church is the people of God. And the people of God have assignments. And those assignments are to be salt and light in the world. We're not of the world, but we're called to make disciples in the space that God has called us. So there are some people that are called into the educational realm, and they are called to be in that space. And if God has called them to be in that space, that means there is an anointing on their life to bring the kingdom there. And I, I am, I'm convinced that the Lord is forming a new wineskin of thinking, and um, and he is inspiring people. There are people that are called to be in government. There are people that are called to be uh, politicians. There are people that the Lord has anointed them to be there. 
And he hasn't anointed them to be a pastor of a church. And I, and I think many, many, many uh, people would say, well, you know, you, you're a speaker, you know, you, you gather people, you've got to be a pastor. Well, maybe the Lord hasn't called them to be a pastor. Maybe the Lord has called them to be in politics, to have a lens of righteousness and justice and to be in that space. And, you know, we look at the whole medical field. You know, there are people that are anointed to be in the medical field. My wife is a nurse, and she has been anointed to be in that place to reach people in that field. And I feel that one of the things that we have done that has hurt so many people in the church is that we have put them in boxes. Mm. And then when they when they say, you know, I actually, I don't I don't feel called to that. We have, we have, um, if you will, made them feel less than. When the truth is, God has placed an anointing on their life to be in a specific area, not disconnected to the church, because the church is in a building, it's, it's a people group. But to bring the kingdom of God into the realm that the Lord has anointed them to be in. This is where we get pushback. You know, I'm sure you've heard it. Well, the church has no business in business, or the church has no place in politics, right? That, that can't be part of it. Haven't you ever heard of separation from you know of church and state? I want to talk about that very briefly. Just for everybody out there that has never even studied it or read it, Thomas Jefferson received a letter from the Danbury Baptist, and the Danbury Baptist asked Thomas Jefferson, Mr. President, are you going to use government to try to control the church and come into the church. And, and Thomas Jefferson said, no, absolutely not. There's a separation of church and state. The government should never be involved in the affairs of the church. Try, and I, he specifically called out worship, trying to impair worship, interfere with worship. And yet that's exactly what happened during COVID. So just for those people that have never heard about this before, that's what it meant by separation of church and state. Government shouldn't get involved in the affairs of the church. Now that said... How does the church properly influence these different mountains? Because so many people say, oh, you know, if you get involved in that, you're, you're going to create a theocracy. And yet, on the other side of it, they're absolutely evangelizing from the secular humanist point of view. They're evangelizing in these mountains all the time. It, it's the kingdom lens. We have to have a kingdom mindset. And we've got to recognize the grace in the calling of God that are on individuals. And, um, and oftentimes what happens is insecure leaders will try to force people into boxes. And if they don't conform inside those boxes, they'll shame them. But one of the things that a leader has the responsibility to do is to see from heaven's lens about that person's life. And to see the anointing, there are some amazing kingdom businessmen and women. And, um, and oftentimes they, they don't necessarily even feel like they fit into the church because they, they don't fit into the box. And they don't fit into the control that, that some pastors would want to put over them. But with the kingdom mindset, um, the, the pastor and the leader says, you know what? God's anointed you. Mm. You, you need to be in that space. You need to be there. You need to, you need to be in that space and you need to be able to influence those individuals for Jesus Christ and to make disciples that will make disciples that will make disciples. I've got some great friends in the business space in the Bay Area and very successful. And it, it, you know, at one time, his whole focus was on pastoring in a conventional way in a church and um, pastoring, you know, 40 to, to 100 people. And he realized this is this is this is a passion that I have. I love doing this, but I'm created for business. I'm created to be able to be in the business market to to make finance, to make money, but also to influence people for the kingdom. And he's having great impact in that space because he's stepping into the anointing that God has called him to step into. When somebody is stepping into that space, right? 
I think there's this this mindset of it's either or, right? I, I have to give up ministry to be in a space when, instead of looking at that space as ministry. And when somebody does look at it as ministry, God obviously blesses it. Everything that we do is unto the Lord. For the the priest, for the ones that have been chosen, you know, First Peter two nine it says they are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, his own special people that you might proclaim his praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Every born again Christian is a priest. And, and whether in their workplace or whether they're in a church building, they're called to represent Jesus Christ unto him. Whatever they do, whatever they put their hand to is unto the Lord. But Chris, isn't this really just window dressing for a nefarious plot for the church to take over everything? No, it's the kingdom. <laughs> Right? I mean, amen, right? Amen. Are we not Christians or, or what? You know, Jesus wants it all. He wants it all. And I hope this resonates with some of you listening and watching today, because if you look at it through that lens, it just clears up so much stuff. And in fact, when you do that, you begin walking in your destiny and you actually begin to capture heaven's attention. So let's talk about your book, Chris, coming up October 3rd. Uh, you can pre-order now on Amazon. What do you mean by somebody capturing heaven's attention? Great question. Our obedience to the Lord captures his attention. Do you remember when King Saul, he was anointed, and Samuel gave him clear instructions, and King Saul was absolutely deceived, and he completely disobeyed God. But the whole time he was disobeying God, he thought that he was worshiping God. And there is a false worship Mm. movement that says all the right things, but doesn't worship God in spirit and truth. And what captures heaven's attention is our yieldedness. And so if the Lord says, you know what, I've actually called you to go into business. What captures God's heart is to obey him, even when it doesn't make sense. And I, I really believe that this generation is is on the, if you will, the 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 breaking of stepping into something that no one can control. That says, God, I just want to obey you. It doesn't even make sense, but I believe that you've spoken to me. I want to go for this. And radical obedience is a fragrance to the Lord that captures heaven's attention. Every time someone steps out and they don't they don't necessarily feel anything, but they just know that God is calling them to do something that gets heaven's attention. Every time someone shares their faith, even when they're afraid, that captures heaven's attention. And when people get born again, that causes a heavenly celebration. I believe that God wants to use every single person to capture heaven's attention. So once that attention happens, what next, right? I mean, you know, as we walk into this, I'm radically obedient to you, Lord. Do you really want me to go into politics, Lord? Because I really don't want to go into politics, but if you're asking me to, I'll go in. Okay, yes, I I go into that space. Or, Lord, if you want me to start a business, I don't know how I'm going to fund it or anything, but, God, if this is what you want me to do, I'm going to step into the business space, right? We, We go there. And it's it's almost like everybody's kind of waiting for the next shoe to drop instead of, no, walk boldly into that space where God's vision is, his provision will follow, which also includes the right people. Yeah, and, and it's being faithful in the process. So many people, you know, they'll take a step of obedience, but they lack perseverance. Mm. And I believe that God loves perseverance. I mean, that's one of the signs of the apostles is perseverance. And I believe that the Lord is raising up apostolic voices right now in America that will persevere. And that captures heaven's attention. And so it's stepping out in faith, obeying the Lord, what he tells them to do, and they keep going no matter what. They obey. They obey knowing that their obedience, heaven celebrates. Mm. And it is it's a sweet fragrance to God, right? And that it's worship. It's worship, yeah. You remember the story of the woman at the well? 
And she thought that worship was about a place Mm -hmm. and a space. But Jesus said, I'm looking for worshipers that will worship in spirit and in truth. And, And I believe that when we discover that our worship and our obedience truly captures heaven's attention, we won't question our obedience. We'll, we'll recognize that this obedience right now is going to echo in eternity. Oh, amen. It is 100%. 100%. In fact, it's, it's a song in eternity. It's a, it's a melody in eternity. I love that, and I love that picture. Some people say, well, Chris, I, I'm obeying the Lord, but I just don't know how to evangelize. I don't know how to go out on the street and talk to somebody, let alone my own family. I mean, I don't know how to do You're really good at this, Chris. I, you're kind of probably were born with this. No, I wasn't. And, and it's not true. And they have an opportunity coming up when you come here on the 11th through the 13th where we can actually put that all to bed. Yep. Let me just share this uh, testimony really quick. You know, when the Lord spoke to me to begin to share my faith, I was afraid. I was afraid to wear a Christian T-shirt. He told me to get a Christian T-shirt. I was so afraid. But I found that as I was obeying the Lord, and I went into Walmart afraid, shaking inside because of what people thought about me wearing a Christian T-shirt. After that day, I realized heaven is excited about one step of obedience. Mm -hmm. And the more I wore that shirt, there wasn't, The power was not in the shirt. The power was in obedience. And you got to know this, that when you step out, God is celebrating you when you step out in faith. And so coming up on August 12th, Saturday, August 12th, we're going to have a time of training and equipping, and we're going to have a time of mobilization. And for many people, this is going to be the first time you're going to step out. And I want to encourage you. You're going to be with some people that are going to walk right alongside of you and that has a little bit more experience that will literally go with you. You don't have to be alone in this process. But as we're stepping out, please know that this is to help you develop a lifestyle of hearing the Lord and sharing your faith. On top of that, it's not going to just be downtown Spokane. It's actually going to be in areas that uh, middle class, they got it all figured out. Wealthy neighborhoods, they got it all figured out. Actually, maybe they need to be evangelized the most. In fact, maybe going near churches, they need to be evangelized the most. This is is an opportunity where we, we have at least 60 people already on board to help walk with people and go out there. And, and so if, if this is resonating in your heart right now, if God is speaking to you right now and you're feeling that little, that little, Pitter patter going a little faster right now. Say yes and show up on the 12th because Chris isn't going to say this, but I will. Chris is one of, if not the best evangelist in the country, if not in the world. He wouldn't say that about himself, but God has anointed him to not only train, but to send people out in the right spirit, that spirit of love and compassion, but also boldness. And so this is a wonderful opportunity to become part of a movement here in Spokane that is going to sweep from Spokane to the surrounding areas. We have a whole bunch of churches already on board that are going to be part of it. So please, mark your calendars, Saturday, August 12th, right here at On Fire Ministries, 115 East Pacific. It does not matter what church you come from. We're not trying to be proprietary. It's all under one banner, the banner of Jesus Christ. Chris, I want to, I want to ask you a little bit more about the book. What really prompted you to write this? I mean, I... You know, we all kind of talk about, I need to write a book, right? You know, say that kind of offhand. But what really prompted you to to write this in? What space did God say, hey, you know, Chris, I want you to speak into that. First thing is I had dyslexia growing up. And um, I was healed in 2009. So the Lord began to speak to me that I would begin to write books and that I would actually begin to help other people write books. And... um, And I was just thinking about, okay, I've got like 30 books. I've got a list of books that I just want to write. And I was just talking to some friends, and they said, Chris, you know you need to write a book about all the testimonies. 
you need to share these testimonies. You need to put it in a book for him. And I said, you're right, I do. And in the book was really responsive. Someone says, Chris, these testimonies are crazy. Hearing the voice of the Lord stepping out. People have to read this. They have to, they have to know like that God wants to use them in a powerful way. And I said, you know, you're right. I'm going to write a book about it. And so that's how the book came about is, uh, you know, I was responding number one to the grace of God because God healed me. And number two is friends that said, Chris, you got to write a book. Every time I hear you share these stories, it's like, uh, I'm inspired. And other people need to hear these stories as well. I love testimonies. I'm going to share a few. A lot of people have been talking about, wow, there's so much happening in the world. It's going to be war with China and this and that. And, you know, and, and we talk about it on Patriot Radio quite frequently, what's happening in the world, but always from the lens of there is a great opportunity that is also right here, right now. 4,500 people baptized at Pirate's Cove. Hallelujah. I hear from a friend of mine, they're requesting as many ministers as possible to go to Africa, 4,000 people waiting to be baptized in Africa. I'm hearing stories like a prostitute set free literally two weeks ago looks like a totally different person, completely and 100% different person. Guy who has a heart attack uh, goes into the hospital, and it's like nothing has happened. Another guy has a stroke, goes in, gets a CT scan, shows the stroke, comes out completely healed. These are happening all over, and it's happening in America, too. Tell a little bit about the testimonies that you have. You already told one, but I just I want to encourage people with testimonies because this isn't just like theory. This is the real power of God moving right now in our time. Just just a, a week and a half ago, I was in an event called Her Voice. And um, at Her Voice, there was these two women that came to the gathering. One of them, the spirit of the living God came upon and uh, they were lesbians. They were um, advocates, you know, for the LGBTQ community. And one of them whom the spirit of the living God fell upon was an evangelist for the LGBT community. The spirit of God came upon her. She got delivered. She surrendered her life to the Lord. She broke up with her girlfriend. She got baptized last week. And now she is on fire for Jesus Christ. And I had a conversation with her just the other day. And she's going, she's applying to go to Lifestyle Christianity uh, to be trained and equipped under Todd White's ministry. I mean, these, these testimonies are taking place. I mean, the, the testimony that I shared about the young man that God touched, you know, a year and a half, about a year and a half ago, through the Lord speaking to me at a church service, he's getting ready to apply to go to school of supernatural ministry in Redding, California. I mean, God is doing something powerful. Uh, another testimony that I'll share is I was at a, a, another community and the Lord spoke to me at 7 a.m. in the morning. He says, I want you to go to this street called Sonoma. And and so um, I, I totally forgot about it. I wrote it in my journal, Sonoma Street. About four hours later, I was in a grocery store, and my friend Steve that's with me here, and Gerald, and uh, we were in the grocery store. And while we were in the grocery store, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, Sonoma Street. So I said, guys, we got to go to Sonoma Street. We drive to Sonoma Street. I say, I don't know what's about ready to happen, but the Lord is about ready to do something. And we drive by this apartment that's just highlighted. And sometimes there are things that may be highlighted to you that you don't understand why it's highlighted. You just know that the Spirit of God wants to do something. We drive by this apartment complex, and I just feel in my heart we need to drive by. We drive back. There's a woman that's outside of this apartment complex. I get out of the car and I said, excuse me, ma'am, this may not make sense to you, but I want you to know that Jesus loves you and he has a plan for your life. And then suddenly, as I said that, she began to weep and cry. She, she bent over by her car, just sobbing, just weeping and crying. And the Lord, and, and she said this, I was praying this morning at 7 a.m. that God would help me. 
Now, mind you, it was 7 a.m. that the Lord spoke to me, Sonoma Street. Wow. <laughs> she was in, she had been out of work for three weeks because she got sick. She had no resources for her car. Her car was broke down. She was standing right there by her car. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, you are called to help her. We got her car towed. We were able to get her car fixed. And she wrote a book about it. It's called The Miracle on Sonoma Street. She begins to <laughs> share that testimony with her new age friends. Her new age friends says, I have never heard of anything like this before. And I want to tell you, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. I believe that God's going to speak to many of you right now. He's going to give you names. He's going to give you locations. He's going to give you birthdays. And the Lord is going to begin to speak to you. And there's a spirit of wisdom and revelation that's resting upon some of you right now. And that the fire of the Holy Spirit is going to move through you. I'll tell you, these kinds of testimonies are happening over and over and over again. And God wants to use the everyday person. He wants to use the everyday person. Everyday person. Every day. I love it. So August 12th, what can people expect on August 12th? Can you kind of walk them through what this looks like? And then, you know, also what the follow up looks like that this isn't just like a one a one day event or something like that or a three day event. This is actually a life changing, life transforming experience. August 12th, we're going to have a time of training, equipping. It's going to be practical. It's going to be something that you're not only going to be able to apply the day of, but how we train you, it's going to help you in the work space. Wherever you're at, wherever you go, God's going to use you. So we're going to train you in a way that goes beyond on the 12th. But the 12th, we're going to have an activation time. We're going to send people out. We're going to have an opportunity for people to share the gospel. People are going to get saved, healed, and delivered through your life. God wants to use you And then that night, we're bringing our big stage out. That's the plan, is to bring our large gospel truck out and to be able to have an open-air gospel campaign, preaching the gospel with worship teams and then preaching and then seeing people get saved. And we'll have the water baptism tanks there. And the amazing thing is we're going to see people get plugged in. And that's what I loved about the report from last year when we were here, as people got plugged in and their disciples, and some of them are actually in a place of leadership, I heard. Yeah, we, we had one guy, uh, I'll call his name Todd. He shows up, and he doesn't know what to expect. He just knows he needs Jesus. And really, that's the hunger that we want to see out in Spokane. Lord, increase our hunger for you. He shows up, and he's like, I need Jesus. My life is a total train wreck. I need Jesus. He gives his life to the Lord. He encounters God. God just wrecks him. He falls to his knees. He he is just a totally new man. He's like, what do I do now? I got to get baptized. So he goes over. He gets baptized. He is now in ministry right here in On Fire. And this is just one story. There's many more, but this is one story. And he's telling everybody about it, right? And then he gets married, and his wife is going through some things, and, and we're praying for her healing over cancer and She's experiencing that right now. She is walking through it right now with the Lord, and God has set the foundation back during this event last year. And if you want to encounter the Lord, come on August 12th. Come in the morning, spend all day with us. We're going to be worshiping in the evening and encounter Jesus Christ. He's here. He's not lost out in the forest somewhere. He's right here, which means awakening is here. His fire is here. His healing is here. His deliverance is here. He just needs you to show up. He wants to be wanted. I think some of you out there don't think you're even lovable, but you are. God is speaking to you right now. Whoever that is, actually it's multiple people. God is speaking to you right now. And this is the time. No more sitting around or waiting. This is the time. Take that step of faith. Chris, I want to just kind of, Take a moment right now as Travis gets this queued up for the recap from last year. I think it's going to really encourage people that this wasn't just maybe one or two people. There were dozens, hundreds of people affected by this event. Go ahead, Roland. 
I am looking forward to the breakthrough that God's going to bring people. There's so many broken people in this city that just need to experience like the love of the Father. This weekend could be a huge breakthrough for the city. We need to go into the darkest areas, the hardest areas, not just the easy areas. That's where evangelism is truly the most effective. That's where we see the miraculous power of Jesus Christ. And Compassion to Action brings God to the darkest corners of every community here in the United States of America. When you give your life to Jesus, what you're really doing is you're saying, Devil, I don't belong to you anymore. You are a liar. I don't belong to you. I'm not serving you anymore. I'm going to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We've seen baptisms happen. People getting up and being helped out of wheelchairs, being baptized and being refreshed. We've seen repentance happen. We saw healings. There was a lady who came with crutches and she got healed by the power of God. Stepped up on stage and lifted her crutches up in victory. I mean, how good is our God? Amen. It was so beautiful to see healings, to see true deliverance, to see people make a radical transformation for their life. I could do this over and over and over. He's worth it all. My ears just popped. Give me your voice. Come on, show us what you couldn't do before. Come on, Jesus. You don't have to be a Christian to come. In fact, invite those in your life that are not believers to show up on August 12th and experience an encounter with Jesus Christ. Chris, what I love, too, about the events is that you you bring all three generations together, the Abraham generation, the Isaac generation, the Jacob generation, and it's a pretty good mix all the way along. It's not just like for young people. We, we saw a pretty good mix all the way along, and when that happens, there's there's something special that is released into the community. Absolutely. And and that is the heart of the Lord. And, you know, when we talk about a generation, we're talking about every age group. And that is the heart of the Lord because God's heart is for family. Oh, it is. And I, I love this idea of the three generations establishing something. This is how communities are established. We have, you know, some people that discard the Abraham generation Abraham generation says those kids are not savable. The Isaac generation is stuck between the two saying, everybody get out of the way. We want to make something happen, right? And God God wants us to take it all and turn that into a movement of his kingdom. I think where I want to go next with, with you is this, this idea with the kingdom that it's a mindset that really, that a lot of it is the stuff that we learned when we were younger. Maybe we were taught in, in government school or something that that is is kind of twisted the mindset that God really doesn't want to redeem the earth, that God doesn't really want to um, see his power expressed. It's kind of like we just have to endure as long as we possibly can, and we've got this gigantic weight on our back as Christians, and we just kind of give a thumbs up. It's really great to be a Christian. Just trust me on that. And, and you know, I'm just going to crawl forward and, that's going to be my life. And, and God has something radically different. Yeah, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And, you know, when we talk about the kingdom of God, it's it's having that understanding of who God is. And God is a righteous God. And it, his foundation is righteousness and justice. And, and when we talk about the kingdom, it's the kingdom of God is not in talk, but it's in power. It's in demonstration. And the Lord wants to cultivate the heart of every believer to have an expectation that God wants to touch their life. God wants to move in their life, that they're not just a a, a zero. They're not taking space up. God actually created them with the purpose, and that is to know him, that is to be connected to the source, that is to be connected into the kingdom of God, and to demonstrate his kingdom wherever they go. I love this from Psalm 107. He turns a wilderness into a pool of water, and dry land into springs of water, and he has the hungry live there, so that they may establish an inhabited city and sow fields and plant vineyards and gather a fruitful harvest. Wow. That's what this is all about. 
that's what it's about. And uh, there's there's a mindset that God is interested in changing. You know, in, in Romans chapter 12, it says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we may prove what is the good and perfect will of God. And the will of God is to see heaven invade earth. The will of God is to see thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How does that look in media? Well, ah, you know, media. I mean, I hear people complain about it all the time. How does that look in media? I think it's getting the blueprint of heaven. What is God saying to touch this generation? Because God has a strategy for every generation. You know, there's a scripture and found in Isaiah 26, verse 3. It says this, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him because he trusts in him. The word peace, when we look at that, that's shalom. That's a power pack word. That's one of the most powerful words in the Bible. But the word mind means creative imagination. Mm. So the peace of God actually helps unlock the creativity of the Holy Spirit. And so when we talk about media, God wants to give us creative ideas, how to influence, how to impact, or what are what are the lens that we can look through, the, the heavenly lens of God. What are you saying right now for this generation, and how can our media impact the generation to reach people for you? It's interesting that in Billy Graham's time, that there were many people that would speak against TV. They would come against Billy Graham for even wanting to venture out and uh, and do things on television. But we see that God used Billy Graham in such a profound and powerful way to get the gospel out Amen. through TV. And I think that God wants to give us creative ways to be able to reach people. Uh, let's talk about um, the uh, holograms. Let's talk about, um, you know, why not having a creative idea of hologram? Why not having creative ideas of of uh, technology, of of reaching people in that space? Here's the deal. If the church doesn't step up, and that space that that is an opportunity for us to be able to enter into to influence people through the kingdom. If the church doesn't step up, the world will. That's right. The world will. Chris, we have about 30 seconds left. Compassion to action dot com. Where can people go to get your book? You can go to Amazon right now to pre-order the book, Capturing Heaven's Attention. It comes out on October 3rd, but get it today. Pre-order it today. Join us, everybody, July 28th at the Capitol in Olympia, 6 p.m. And then after that, on August 12th, right here at On Fire Ministries with Chris Overstreet and Compassion to Action. This is Matt Shea. Thank you so much for joining me on Patriot Radio today. May God bless all of you. And he is making this generation the greatest one. The awakening is here. Keep up the fight. 